Hey traders, Andy Demi here. Hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are well. So um, it's been a little while to give you a little market update. It's been the school holidays and uh, we've been taking it easy, but well, actually I'll take that back. Not taking it easy when you've got kids as many of you have, you'll know that taking it easy does not really uh, make any sense when you've got kids. But anyway, kids are back at school. I'm back on the market. Uh, took one trade today, a little scalp on the euro dollar. Uh, that was a nice trade. Uh, pretty easy uh, trade, hit profit as I was taking the baby out for a walk, came back, hit my target. Just a scalp trade. Um, but wanted to just kind of ease myself in and, um, you know, half risk. Didn't want to kind of, you know, push uh, too hard on, on my first proper day of trading. And I'm just kind of easing myself back in. So, uh, because honestly, if you, I have tried to trade with kids in the house, it really is impossible. And I don't like to use that word impossible, but really it pretty much is, um, you know, from all sorts of craziness, people opening the door and pressing the buttons on my keyboard and asking me to fix their dolls whilst I'm in the middle of a trade. That That's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So I've learned my lesson the hard way. Um, school holidays, take a break. Anyway, now, what I want to do today, guys, I want to quickly give you a quick overview of the euro dollar, uh, what I'm seeing in the euro dollar, where I think it's going to go next, and uh, where the opportunities are. So um, let's begin. If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to get future emails. And please hit the like button because it always helps YouTube show our content out to the world and it spreads the love, of course. So with that being said, guys, let's hit it. So firstly, euro dollar clearly in a downtrend, right? You can see that um, anybody who's done uh, kind of technical analysis for more than five minutes will can see that at the moment we are basically trending down. Now, if you kind of zoom out and look at the bigger picture, so let me just bring in a weekly chart, for example, you'll be able to see that um, essentially we are also um, ranging on the bigger picture. So you can kind of see the markets are pretty much just, you know, pretty much ballpark figure doing this kind of thing. So, you know, you can kind of look at that and say, well, you know, it could be bottoming out soon. And you can also take a horizontal kind of estimated level where it could go a little bit lower as well. So just bear that in mind, you know, we are, although we have been trending down for the last few months, um, you can actually see that we are getting towards the bottom end of this um, this channel. So, um, so there could be some bullish action coming in. Now, where might that bullish action come in? Well, let's go and explore a little bit more. We're going and um, let's put in all of our tools and see where things stand. So the first thing I want to do, guys, is I want to put in my moving averages. So I'm just going to stick in my moving averages. And we want to move over to a, whoops, hold on. Let's go over to a daily chart and then let's put in our moving averages just like that. So you can see um, it's pretty much textbook, um, eight below the 21, 21 below the 50, 50 below the 200, trending nicely down. And, um, you know, the last time we were above the 200 was all the way back in May 2021, so nearly about a year ago. So, you know, to truly see some real upside, uh, similar to what we saw over here, for example, um, you know, we really need to break the 200 EMA, which is this green line here. So we're quite far away from that at the moment. But that's going to be the acid test if this market does rally. Now, um, let's also have a little look at what the... Um, what the support and resistance levels are saying. And I'm going to plug in my daily levels right there. Uh, and don't worry, if it looks a little bit messy. We're going to move over to a lower time frame and it will be a lot clearer there. Um, as you can see, you can see there, guys, we've broken this support area here and we are going back 
towards testing that um, support area, which then becomes resistance. Let me just bring in my pen as well. Should have loaded this up before, uh, but it's going back. And what I like about this little zone here as well, guys, is you have the 21 daily um, moving average. So let's mark that down as an important zone. This is around 108.90. 108.95 okay that could be a really nice rejection zone and and a little bit higher as well so if you kind of look at this i'd be looking at really this block here so and the reason being is that this area here is also a recent uh, support that becomes resistance so about 109.50 to 108.95 could be good potential uh short okay and you know, if it is going to go lower, then we would be potentially expecting it to go back down towards 107 down here, which is the next daily support area. Now, if you plug in the Fibonacci as well, um, in fact, let me go to the four hour time frame so we can do the, the fibs on a lower time frame. Um, let's see. And let's plug it in and see where the fibs are pointing to. So where is the current market cycle. Um, it's just hit a D, just hit a D, hasn't gone back yet. So this is, so this is called a fade area. This is a buy down here. This is one of the buys. And um, in fact, basically without going into too much detail, this area here is a buy according to the four hour time frame. So you could get something like that. Now, if I flick over to the hourly time frame, let's see what the hourly time frame is showing us. Um, Let's have a little look. So the hourly time frame is interesting. Very, very interesting. I like this a lot because it's actually, if this market does kind of hold here, it is telling us that the market is going to go down to 107. Um, that's, the, that's where the FIB completes, which is basically exactly on this daily level. And that's called confluence, guys. So that's what we want to find. We want to find confluence. So for me, the opportunity is to, you know, I, I sold this earlier on. I'm out of this now. I scalped it. But the opportunity looks like we could get another push down. Um, obviously, I just spoke about this area here. So it could even just go a little bit higher. Hit this daily level. You can see it's quite a reactive level and then maybe go lower. So as long as we don't break this A up here, then the downtrend is intact. So the idea is looking for a short down to 107, and then I'm gonna be looking for a bounce at 107, and then we'll kind of see where we stand from there. So that's pretty much it on the Euro dollar, guys. That's what I'm looking for. Um, it, it still looks strong to the bearish side, but just be aware on the higher time frames we do have um you know a weekly range a channel and so at some point there could be some new demand coming into the market for uh this pair that's it guys so if you like that video content please hit the like button always appreciate you and by the way um if you want to check out the indicators if you've never used them before i'll also put a link in the description to, so you can go and trial them, okay? So you can download a free trial. You don't need to put any details in, like credit cards or anything like that. Just completely free trial. Just play around with them. If you're an experienced um, or at least intermediate trader, you might find them useful. So you've got your FIBs, your uh, daily trading range, support resistance, trend lines, and so on. And if you're completely new to trading, I'm also going to put some links into some free training that you can go check out to help you with your trading. So, um, and that's it, guys. So, have a good one. Good trading, good investing, happy, health, whatever else. And um, I'll catch you again soon with another video. Take care.